Okay, we're here outside Barclays as the loud uh, pro-Palestinian protesters. You know, it's a free country. Everyone has the right to peacefully protest. I take an interest because, you know, the, the shop Kadem you know, is innocent in all this. They're trying to shut it down. And, you know, I've done my protests against Barclays. I've done my protests against HSBC for the money laundering. I would rather live in a world where banks weren't so predominant and didn't control pretty much every aspect of the economical, energetic and financial world, but they do, and we have problems with that. But attacking them in terms of Palestine and Israel and Gaza and so forth, we need to ask the question, where does all that reconstruction money come from when Gaza or the Palestinians or the West Bank want to rebuild, when they want to build massive projects? Where does that money come from? It comes from Western banks. You know, you walk along Manchester, you don't always see a no. finely dressed pony. <laughs> What's his or her name? It's Bruno. Bruno? Yeah. Very nice. He's just taken over as a new Pegasus for the regiment. A new, new Pegasus for the regiment? What regiment's that? Parachute Regiment. Parachute Regiment? Paras? Yeah. Is there a service going on in the church today? There is, yeah. It's a change of their colours today. So oh, fantastic. We march back through the sound in a bit. Nice one. Well, thank you very much. No problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to follow it. This is nothing to do with the demonstration, is it? So why is it you're filming? Oh no, I'm just a blogger. I just film everything that I film. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. Please, thank you very much. I've the gentleman before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm a blogger. Nothing against you guys. Charlie Veach. Is it Veach? Veach. Veach. I can never remember how to pronounce it. Veach. Charlie Veach. I film things I find interesting in public. You know, that's it. Game's waving at me. Okay, well, we're here at the Salford Royal Hospital. It used to be called Hope Hospital, and when you try and tell people Salford Royal, they're like, what, Hope? Hope? Well, I hope so. But um, I'm going into the ear, nose, and throat, the ENT specialist unit now, for a two-week follow-up after my uh, slit throat operation to remove the infected, abscessed, salivary gland stone that was all messed up. And they took the gland along with it. Um, I was anxious, you know, there's a bit of trepidation going in for an operation, my first ever operation, something being removed from me, my pound of flesh. Um, and I was a bit scared, but not to the point where, you know, we all have fear, but it didn't stop me coming to hospital, checking in at the right time. Anyway, there I was getting ready for my operation and I've never been under general anaesthetic before so I was very keen from a kind of consciousness exploration point of view to see how it would feel to, against your will, fall unconscious. And so we went in and they were having, a, you know, decent, decent doctors and surgeons and the care here is excellent. It's, this is probably rated as the best hospital in Britain right now. And I'm very lucky for that. It's very incongruous to the area. Salford is like the Beirut or the Chernobyl of Britain. And uh, we have the best hospital. Maybe we need it you know, with all the knife crime. I don't know. Um, so I was going in and you get taken into a kind of pre-operation theater and you're lying on your gurney and they first put in a... Well, before they did, they're like, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. The surgeon said we're going to have to you know, shave part of your beard. I said, no problem. I didn't know if I should have done it at home before I came. I thought you guys would do it. I can't be the first bearded patient. They're like, no, no, of course, of course, we'll do it. We'll shave your beard. And so um, there were like, um, one of the doctors said to me, I said, oh, you're awfully chirpy. And I joked with her. I said, why, why should I not be happy? Should I not be? And they all laughed because, you know, there I was about to have a, a not a serious operation, but not a, not an unserious operation either. So they, first of all, they put in a uh, sedative into your blood, which they say is many times stronger than morphine. And so that went in, I felt the kind of cold go up the arm. And yeah, I felt drunk or high or just very kind of sedated. And I'm like chatting to them. And then the anesthetist, cool guy, he goes, right, okay, Charlie, it's, the anesthetic is going in now. And I was braced myself. I said, here we go. Let's see what falling unconscious against your will actually feels like and so they're like blah 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 tell us about your kids blah 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 and I'm like right any moment now any moment and then this is at half past one in the afternoon and then just as I'm getting ready 
the next moment is um, looking at a clock at half past four and feeling an incredibly strong pain in my neck as if a team of men and women had actually sli sliced me open, cut out a gland, pushed around in there, maybe slapped me about a bit just for good measure and stitched me back up. That's what it actually felt like. It was very sore. And this poor guy called Nigel, he was like, you're in this kind of ward when you wake up from general anesthetic and Nigel came running over he goes, are you okay? I was like, oh, I'm in so much pain. There were like tears streaming out of my eyes. It was so painful. I was like, give me some painkillers. And he's like pumping morphine in and he gave me the kind of the maximum he's allowed to give. And, um, you know, poor guy. I was kind of, you know, saying to him, Nigel, I need more. Anyway, he helped me stand up to have a wee. They give you this like weird box thing made of this hard cardboard to urinate in and I just couldn't piss lying down. I don't know, it just felt wrong. It felt like I was wetting the bed. So he helped me get up with all these wires attached to me and ECG and you know the cannula in your arm with the kind of saline solution drip. And I really needed to urinate after three hours under general anesthetic. But very strange, it's like one moment there I am, 1.30 in the afternoon going, right, I'm gonna be ready for this. And then there was no concept, there was no knowledge of a falling into unconsciousness. There was just the very next moment, the very next, you know, the very next frame in the 24 frames per second was literally kind of just coming to and looking at the clock, noticing that three hours had passed. And what I found fascinating about general anesthetic is that there was zero confusion. The instant I opened my eyes three hours later, I knew exactly where I was. I knew exactly what had happened. I knew why I was all wired up. It was truly just a continuation of consciousness with a three hour gap. Where was I? Well, I was lying there being operated on, but where was I? But I just, want to, I just wanted to do, to do a few videos that aren't about fighting with people or conflict or the state sticking its dick up your ass and demanding things. I don't know. It's a beautiful world. Let's do videos about other things. Anyway, the, um, I stayed overnight here in Salford uh, Royal in the H2 ward. It was quite funny. They got it wrong. They said that was going to be a day surgery, which means that you go home the same day my surgeon came in and he goes no he's staying overnight they had no bed in the hospital for me and then um as i came to they're like oh good news you're in ward h2 you're in one of the specialist units and um it's in the new part of the hospital that you can see over there new part brand new billions of pounds spent my ward was just around there and um i had and this is not bad for the national health service for the socialized government health care it was a brand new room. It was super big, super clean. I had ensuite, shower, my own bathroom, and I had my own room. I didn't have to share with anyone. And many people in that ward had to be in these kind of big mixed wards with like eight people per room. And I felt very blessed, very lucky, and very well looked after. And that's what you want to know. If I can end this video on a positive note, is to say that we take the National Health Service for granted. It's kind of like, if you grew up in a good family, your good family is always there. So you become a teenager, you go, eh, fucking, eh. you don't notice the beauty and the love behind all things. And the National Health Service saved my life. And I'm so grateful and it's so wonderful. And here I am for my follow up appointment. I better end this video so that I'm not late. But, you know, it's when you're vulnerable, when you need help that you really appreciate the humanity behind the, the building, the facade, the whatever, you know? So, God bless.